and welcome to the March edition of Town Topics. I'm your host, Amanda Thompson, and I'm here with First Selectman Jim Hayden. How are you, Jim? I'm doing terrific, thank you. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's 65 degrees. Hey, life is good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so now let's just cross our fingers that weather holds out and we can start enjoying our spring. But we still have some talk to do about COVID, I'm sure. What's the latest um, with the town and, and vaccines and all of that? We certainly will continue to talk about COVID for a while, but uh, we are uh, showing and reflecting what's happening elsewhere in the state. Uh, the numbers are going uh, down. Uh, there seems to be more controls. And as uh, as things uh, proceed, it will continue to, uh, uh, some of the restrictions will be taken away. So uh, that, that's all good. Um, the... Uh, just to give some quick numbers here. Uh, first of all, the uh, the important thing is to know that Farmington Valley Health District has done a tremendous job, both with their clinics and also with their contact tracing. The clinics for the vaccinations, of which I'll talk about uh, shortly, and okay. also the uh, uh, just the contact tracing and the advice that they have been giving out regarding the, uh, certainly regarding the, uh, the whole COVID thing. Uh, so uh, anyways, uh, the from March 2020, some places are doing uh, anniversary remembrances. I, I, you know, for a year, we're not gonna do an anniversary of remembrance. We wanna put it in our rear view mirror and never look back at it again. Yeah. But anyways, the uh, from March 2020 to March 10th, uh, there's been 223 positive cases of COVID in East Granby. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, most of it happened in November and December. There was uh, from the 17th of March to uh, October 31st, there was 31 cases in seven months, 99 cases in the month of November and December, which is 40 some odd, 46% of uh, all cases that were uh, yeah. occurred. Uh, and then um, for, from January, from uh, February 1st to March 10th was 32 cases or 11% of all the ca uh, all the cases. So everybody's, you know, everybody is sick and tired of COVID. Everybody's sick and tired of the restrictions. Uh, I would just ask that folks continue to, to stay patient, to continue to maintain the, uh, the mask and the social distancing as things open up a little bit. Um, and, you know, the three W's, wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Uh, and, um, you know, the advice that was, you know, back in March was if you feel sick, stay home. Uh, that still applies. Uh, and, you know, there there is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, there is uh, a large financial aid package that was passed and was uh, going to be signed, if not signed already today, by the president. Uh, and there certainly is, you know, a lot going on regarding that. The numbers are starting to go down specifically. Uh, you know, there are more and more people will be able to do more and more things. But if you, you know, keep your, <clears throat> excuse me, keep your mask on and watch your distance, uh, that way we don't have to go through this again. So the, uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, if uh, any of our residents need uh, any, uh, assistance because uh, you know of food insecurity or financial or social issues in the community mm -hmm. uh, we're working with residents to address that uh, specifically the social and senior services uh, directors um, and certainly if uh, if you have any questions or you need some assistance you can call senior services at 860-413-3334 Social services at 860-413-3328, or in my personal preference is email us at info at egtownhall.com, and we will make sure that we get the information to you or have the appropriate person speak to you. Um, also, just to remind everybody that everything is always in uh, is very uh, um, confidential and uh 
you know, you can rest assured that if you're talking about a delicate uh, matter that no one else is talking about it. Uh, and I just wanted to remind folks that our social services and senior services directors uh, have been helping folks for, for uh, a good amount of time and uh, they make sure that you get what you need and no one else needs to know. Thank you. Is there anything you wanted to say about the the COVID shots or? Anything? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. The uh, I have a personal uh, uh, history with this. I took my second shot yesterday. Oh, nice. So uh, two more weeks and uh, I'll be golden, um, as will many, many residents. One of the things I mentioned earlier is about Farmington Health District and what a great job they've done with the clinics. And um, the governor on March 1st uh, changed the rules for that. And it wasn't, um, uh, it, it wasn't a case of where, okay, uh, it's, you know, special, uh, you know, first offenders, uh, uh, special situations. Uh, he changed it, simplified it, it made it easier, but it, you know, maybe uh, it's not so easy if you know if you have underlying morbidities for your your health, um, and you were looking forward to getting you know, and you're 45 years old, and you were looking to uh, you know get your shot in March, and now it looks like it's going to be April or May. But anyways, just to let people know, the um, the new schedule by the governor was. Uh, uh, March 1st, uh, it, the age group for those eligible for vaccines was uh, uh, 55 to age uh, 64. Uh, on March 22nd, the group will expand to 45 uh, years of age to 54. April 12th will expand from 35 to 44. And May 3rd, 16 to 34. So uh, it's age uh, rated now, it's not needs and whether you're a first responder or not. Um, and the, uh, so anyways, uh, the, a lot of questions that we get is, okay, I registered, I already got my first shot at the high school from the Farmington Valley Clinic. Uh, and what, um, you know, what's that mean? Well, if you already have a second appointment, then you'll go to your second appointment. Uh, if you don't have an appointment, uh, then you'd have to um, use this, the VAM system or other systems that are out there and you know, get your second shot. Uh, that would mean that you would not be able to use the East Grammy High School because part of the governor's direction, uh, the um, Farmington Valley Health District in the month of March has to do 6,500 uh, inoculations or vaccines, vaccinations rather, uh, and the vaccinations are uh, for teachers, uh, school staff, uh, and uh, uh, child care staff. So there was a significant change, which kind of confused people uh, a little bit, but hopefully we're past that. Uh, the other thing that that is really important to understand is that um, with the vaccinations, uh, you just got to, you know, you got to persevere. Uh, every time they, they announce a new group, it's three days before you can get a phone answered because it's just so much demand, so much demand. Mm -hmm. There's more vaccines coming uh, to the marketplace. Uh, there's more, uh, uh, there, there's, there's more places, uh, and they're working on the technical issues. I am told, and I don't know if, uh, if it's true or not, but... Uh, I'm told that uh, if you call the numbers early in the morning, like 5, or you call late at night at 12 or 1 o'clock, uh, you have more of an odds of uh, being getting through so that you can make an appointment. And all, just because you get to make an appointment doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to get your shot uh, in the next couple of weeks. I mean, I, I have people that have talked to me and said that they've, they're they happy because they, they, they are in the system, but their first shot is May. So, mm -hmm. you know, it just, yeah, it, it's a case of trying to catch up with demand and, and, and to handle things. But I got to tell you, um, having gone through it twice uh, at the clinic uh, from through Farmington Valley Health District, it's very professional, very organized. And somebody, you know, people say, well, gee, how come it's at the high school? Why isn't it at town hall? Well, I can only get 35 people into the town hall uh, uh, conference room and uh, 
that they're not socially distanced. And if they're not socially distanced, you know, how do you get, you know, and the clinic is averaging 450 shots per day that they do it. So yesterday they did 400 uh, uh, inoculations. So if I have, uh, so I don't have an alternative place that's big enough to make sure that things will go smooth. Well, gee, you got the rec barn, Jim. Why don't you use the rec barn? Well, you, you can't use the rec barn because again, it doesn't have the capacity that you need to be able to. Uh, you, you can get people in, you can get the shots, but you you could have 10 to 15 people waiting for 15 minutes to make sure that you're okay before you're released and there's no um, landing space. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the community center certainly has got, you know, parking. Uh, and uh, But again, uh, the best uh, use of uh, buildings was the East Granby High School gym. Uh, and it made a lot of sense. So it wasn't a case, uh, you know, it wasn't a case of, well, geez, Jim didn't want to have anybody come into town hall. Jim didn't want anybody to come into community center. Jim didn't want anybody to come into the rec building. It's the case of the first selectman wanted to make sure that it was done properly and appropriately and met the space requirements of the experts. And the experts are the uh, Farmington Valley Health District. And all of that worked, all of that has worked tremendously well a, thanks for the dedication of the uh, Farmington Valley Health District and their organization. And B, uh, thank you to the high school custodians uh, and everyone else that made sure that it worked. Uh, and um, so it appears that uh, the in April, uh, the schools perhaps might be back uh uh, on Wednesdays, so that means that that's no longer available. Okay. So for the, if first of all, by being an East Granby uh, resident, it didn't guarantee that you were going to be able to uh, to go to East Granby anyways. It, it, there wasn't any slots put away for East Granby, although a lot of residents were able to get the shots. Um, so, you know, it, it, now it may be Sinsbury or it may be some other locations mm -hmm. uh, that, that you're doing when you go on to the, uh, the computer system of the state, which is called VAMS. When you go on it, uh, you know, they'll ask you, you know, how far are you willing to drive? Five miles, 10 miles, 20 miles. Well, there was uh, someone yesterday uh, that, uh, so it's eligible for everybody in, in the state of Connecticut, uh, no preference to home location. And it was just, uh, there was somebody from Trumbull yesterday okay. because they wanted to get, they certainly wanted to get the, uh, uh, the shot and that's what they needed to do. Uh, yeah. You know, a 65 mile ride isn't my idea of a good time either. Uh, so, uh, you know, hopefully uh, you'd be able to get something within 10, 15, 20, 25 miles. So, anyway, so the vaccine uh, vaccination schedule has changed, the criteria has changed, and um, the uh, uh, there wasn't preference to East Grammy residents, but East Grammy residents were able to have the clinic on Wednesdays at the high school. Uh, and now that the mission of Farmington Valley Health District has changed, where they um, uh, they are focusing on uh, on uh, school uh, and teachers and uh, uh, child care uh, places, uh, which have been determined to be a priority by the governor. Uh, the uh, it's not like when you register, you'll be able to go to East Grammy because it's not open for that. Okay. So we'll just have to wait. And the best place is to go onto the state website in order to access it, I assume. You referenced calling, but it, it, you can do either way, I assume. Is that correct? Well, I, I was uh, suggesting that you call for help, uh, not that you call for vaccinations. Uh, okay. You're absolutely right. You need to uh, use the uh, portal. So it's uh, the portal.ct.gov uh, front slash uh, vaccine hyphen portal. All you have to do is go to Connecticut, uh, uh, you know, put in, uh, you know, on your Google search, uh, State of Connecticut website, uh, and uh, it's got a COVID banner on the top, and it will walk you through what you need to do. So okay. uh, if I misled people inadvertently, uh, no, I, I, you don't need to call 
uh, social services or senior services, you need to call them if you have other issues uh, that we can help you with. Uh, but from a vaccine perspective, uh, you want to use the, uh, the state portal uh, to do it. Or, uh, you know, I mean, every day you see more and more places that are going to you know, CVS, Walgreens, uh, mm -hmm. Hartford Healthcare, um, Trinity Health. Uh, so there's there's a lot of clinics out there. Uh, you know, are, I know those, are those all on the, when you register on the state website to get a shot, do, are those all included in locations, the CVS and all of those, or are those separate? I believe it's separate. I uh, okay. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's separate. Okay. So, um, I mean, besides everything that's that's going on from the state and the shots locally, I know um, that the Economic Development Committee is kind of working on a, a, the rally for retail. Yeah, the uh, one of uh, one of our big concerns uh, is the, uh, the the small businesses uh, won't survive. Uh, and or, you know, the rest estimated statewide, 25% of the restaurants that were open on March 1st, 2020, are going to be open on June 1st uh, of 2021. So uh, that certainly is a, uh, you know, is, is a huge concern. Uh, the vitality of, of towns and of uh, businesses uh, is the small businesses. And uh, so we, um, you know, we said, you know, how can we kind of put a spotlight on uh, the small businesses and have people think about it? So the Economic Development Commission came up with a, uh, a idea, and they call it Rally for Retail and Restaurants, and it's running uh, from, uh, uh, well, I should say it's running through May 1st. And you can enter and win a $40 card. So, you know, it's a gift card. Um, so it's not necessarily, you know, a lot of, of money, but what it is is it's putting the spotlight on small businesses and just reminding people that small businesses certainly can use our assistance. Mm -hmm. So it's supporting East Grammy businesses through this challenging time. You can win $40 from the weekly drawing, which is held on Mondays. Uh, businesses are listed on the town uh, website. Uh, so how do you get this $40? Well, you, if you buy um, uh, $40 worth of merchandise from two separate receipts, uh, and then you can scan it in and email it to info at egtownhall.com or just look on the website and it'll tell you how to do it. Um, and you put your name and phone number in, and then on Mondays you're, it's pulled uh, whoever the winner is. Uh, and it excludes gas purchases. There's one winner per week, and you can uh, win two times over a period of 12 weeks. So I'll keep on, even if you've won, keep on uh, entering. And uh, and the whole idea is to just have people start to think local. Just the whole idea is to have people say, you know, hey, you know, we got some good businesses. We want to make sure we support them. It's putting the focus on the small businesses when they need the help. Well, fantastic. That's a good good way to remember to go to our local shops. So um, you're probably focused on the budget, right? That's That has to be. We have some meetings coming up in this month, next month. Yes, what we are the, What do. are the plans? So the um, just to remind folks, the um, annual town budget consists of four components, uh, the Board of Selectmen operating budget, Board of Education operating budget, the capital reserve fund that we use to uh, maintain our infrastructure uh, from anything to um, air conditioning to fire engines to DPW trucks mm -hmm. um, and then a debt service. And so the debt service is uh, we've got uh, one which is the 2013 uh, uh, addition and renovation of, of uh, Seymour plus uh, some work that was uh, done at Allgrove. And then um, currently we're in the school, uh, the town, uh, school town uh, roofs and roads project. And um, the uh, we're going to be doing permanent bonds in July on that. So you have to build that into your plan too. So mm -hmm. just picture a chair and each leg is very important. Uh, and uh, 
uh, so since December, all the boards have been working on uh, they've been working on, on uh, the budgets, and uh, so the first thing uh, you know back in February, the board of finance said uh, to the board of education and to the board of selectmen, look at a two and a half percent increase and see what that means to your services that you can provide and see, you know, then they'll see what that means financially. So it doesn't mean it's going to be two and a half percent now, but it means that they're looking at it and they're studying it. Um, so, you know, like I said, the process, process started in December. Uh, it's uh, starting to ramp up now uh, with the March 16th. That's Tuesday, March 16th, Board of Finance meeting, mm -hmm. where the Board of Finance will listen to the budgets that will be presented by the Board of Ed and by the Board of Selectmen. Uh, then um, on April 6th, uh, the uh, Board of Finance will direct the operating boards on what budgets to bring before the public hearing on the 20th. So that brings me to um, the governor's uh, rules, uh, executive orders, on meetings stop April 19th. So we anticipate that they will not be renewed. So we anticipate that we will have an in-person live uh, town uh, hearing on the budget. Uh, and uh, and then uh, we um, will have, so the hearing will be on the 20th of April. And uh, the on the 27th, uh, there'll be the annual town meeting. Um, it may be a virtual town meeting, uh, a Zoom, but I don't think so. I think it'll be uh, it'll be live. I anticipate that the board of selectmen will have a referendum, like we have for the past ten years. Mm -hmm. So uh, there won't be any vote on the 27th of April. It will be a referendum. Uh, we, um, through yeoman work of the registrars uh, and the people that worked with them. Um, we saw that we could do a safe uh, election when we did the November election, and we know we can do a safe referendum. Uh, what the hours will be, uh, we're not sure. Uh, that that will be set at the town meeting, um, which would be uh, April twenty uh, seventh. But the uh, the uh, you know normally by statute it's one o'clock until eight o'clock, and we've always done the six in the morning until eight o'clock. Whether that's still necessary, I don't know. Certainly, it's necessary to have a, uh, a referendum, I think, in these economic times. So just to go over it quickly again, March 16th, Board of Finance meeting at 7.30, um, and that will be a Zoom meeting, uh, and the information will be on the uh, on the website along with, by Monday, the uh, packages uh, that are going to be presented to the Board of Finance by the other two boards. Mm -hmm. On April 6th uh, at 7.30, the Board of Finance, again, a Zoom meeting, will provide final direction to the boards regarding the budget to be presented um, at the April 20th public hearing. Uh, the uh, on this, We still anticipate that on Saturday the 17th, we'll have um, the annual town budget uh, uh, let's talk Turkey edition, uh, so people will see what's being proposed. And then uh, April 20th um, will be at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we anticipate it would be at the East Grammy High School. Uh, if uh, the executive orders get extended, then it would be a Zoom meeting. But we anticipate that uh, it's the day after 19th is when everything expires, and the hearing would be the 20th. Again, it's a hearing. It's not a vote. Uh, and then on the 27th, there will be the uh, town meeting, um, and that usually is held at the Senior Community Center. Again, you know, you've got to do the social distancing, and uh, you've got to uh, do the mask. Um, so, you know, maybe we look for, maybe it'll be at the... Uh, the auditorium two times in a row, um, but I don't anticipate that because usually when you're not voting at a town meeting for the budget, you don't have as many people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, you know, we'll do social distancing with the seating uh, at the auditorium. You know, we'll block rows off uh, so that there'll be, uh, you know, six feet between people. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, we if we've worked this hard and given up a year of our life, we don't want to not do what we need to do to maintain our safety so that we don't have to ever go through this again. Right. 
And then the, so the 27th would be, of April would be the annual town meeting. And then uh, I would anticipate that the second week of May, the Board of Selectmen would um, have a referendum. And I assume it will say, um, like, if, if you're not sure which it's going to be, if you go to the Board of Finance to the agenda, like, it should say if it's Zoom with the link or it will say, like, what the location is on the agenda? Correct. It will be very the clear that it will be, we'll be very clear on the 20th and the 27th that it's, uh, if indeed it is, that it will be a live meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. So how is everything with the grand list? The uh, the grand list is the list of all taxable property in the town of East Granby, and uh, so it's important. Um, and we saw 2.08 percent, so almost 2.1 percent growth in the grand list, which was good. Uh, certainly beat most of the towns around us. Uh, and um, so what that does is that expands your tax base so that, uh, you know, you uh, it, uh, the tax burden isn't all on one segment, whether it's houses or whether it's cars or whether it's personal property. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, uh, uh, we had a 2% uh, growth. Uh, uh, we uh, increased $12.6 million, uh, or a net total of $619,930,000 worth of real estate, motor vehicles, and personal property. The growth was in personal property. Personal uh, property is a misnomer. Uh, it's uh, not our property. It's the business's third property, and it's called personal property. So computers, you know, forklifts you know yeah and everything in between uh you really rename that <laughs> it's statutory it's yeah. statutory it's not anything we control can control i mean i can get into enough trouble by myself i don't need you pushing <laughs> me to get into trouble at a state level <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, you bring up a good point. It 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 does um, it certainly does uh, not accurately reflect. Yeah, what when it people really hear is. personal property, property, they think like, "What am I getting taxed on?" And it's no, yeah. it's on. You're the thinking business. what? You know, okay, my engagement ring, my uh, you know, yeah. your, my Car, my boat, boat, my right. yeah, yeah. So. So, um, so the split from the grand list is 76% for real estate, 13% for personal property, and 11% uh, for motor vehicles. Okay. Uh, so for tax relief programs, I think you, you talked about it just a little bit with, with the COVID stuff, but is there anything else you wanted to mention as far as like for seniors or people who have disabilities, any tax relief? Yeah, absolutely. The uh, uh, we had a deferral program where you could get an extra sixty days to pay your taxes without any interest or penalty, and uh, that's expired now. Anyways, uh, so what I uh, wanted to talk about was the senior disabled tax relief program. So, if uh, residents are age sixty five years of age or older. Uh, or you're disabled, you might be eligible for tax relief if your income qualifies. So the um, uh, if you if your income qualifies you, the amount of property taxes that you may pay for the upcoming fiscal year may be reduced. So it's certainly worth. So how do you find out if you qualify? Is you uh, can make a confidential appointment with the assessor, Mary Ellen Brown. Mary Ellen will review your paperwork and mm -hmm. let you know if you qualify or not. So first of all, uh, you know, I encourage people to uh, to find out about it, call the assessor's office or set up an appointment to, to see if you qualify. Um, the important thing is, you know, there should, there's no stigma to this. If you qualify a program, you qualify for a program. So go ahead and, and apply and save yourself some tax dollars. That's what the whole idea is. It's for seniors and for disabled. And it's a, a tax relief program that's uh, that was initiated by the state, and then the town of East Granby um, matched it. Uh, so uh, there certainly is some uh, serious savings that you can do on taxes, depending on your income. And uh, it's worth a phone call to the assessor to find out um, if you qualify or what information or questions you have that you can be answered. Nice. Thank you. Um, so there's a winter cleanup happening 
soon. I yeah, think. I almost didn't want to talk about it because I was afraid that I would jinx us when yeah, we had a big snowstorm. We don't talk about it then, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> so the... Uh, uh, just to remind folks that, uh, you know, no matter how good and we are, we have an excellent DPW, Public Works Department. No matter how terrific you are, uh, occasionally something's going to happen. Uh, we're, you know, curbing, uh, the plow jumps the curb, uh, kind of takes some of your grass out. Uh, or a spot or creates mud or takes some of your curbing out. So, um, you know, and the the, uh, the DPW folks, uh, like I said, they do a great job. But if, if there was a problem or anything during the month of May, of March and April, they go around with trucks and they look for anything that they can fix. If, you know, tamp down some some uh, lawn that was, was um messed up or pick up rocks boulders uh, curbing so um, i just wanted to let you know that that automatically happens but i want to let people know that during uh, march and april our crew is going to be doing that okay thank you so now that the snow is melted almost all melted and you see things you didn't see before if it's was caused by us we're going to come back and fix it <laughs> That's good. Well, thank you for doing that. Um, so th there's a mural project that's happening in town? Yeah, they, well, uh, it's not happening yet, but I'm okay. providing the opportunity and the information for people to see if it's okay. something they want to do. And um, so Connecticut Murals is working on a project to encourage racial equity and awareness. And the, the goal is to partner with 39 communities across Connecticut to create 39 Martin Luther King themed murals by January of 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, the, the, it costs $15,000 of which there's a grant for 7,500. So, uh, and, and this would not be a, uh, something that the town would do, but this would be something that the town would encourage volunteers and work with the volunteers um, to, uh, but they would have to raise funds uh, and uh, you know, roughly seventy-five hundred dollars. There are grants that are out there. Uh, uh, you know, per, there's a new program that uh, is coming out uh, from the Hartford Foundation. Well, it's not new, but the Hartford Foundation is uh, uh, the the group is going to do twenty-five thousand dollars worth of uh, grants in the upcoming uh, couple months. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I believe the letters went out yesterday or the day before where uh, they're talking about, uh, so it's the East Grammy group, it's all local people, it's not a town thing. Uh, local people got together and with the guidance from, and money from the Hartford Foundation uh, are looking for projects that will help the community. Certainly if, uh, if folks uh, thought murals a, a, a promoting racial equity, uh, made sense uh certainly you know they may want to apply to the uh, east Grammy version of the hartford foundation uh for for some funding um or raise it somewhere else so what is this okay so it's murals it promotes racial uh, uh, uh racial awareness what else does it do it's um there's you know murals that are very professionally done uh and uh they on the uh uh, Connecticut mural website you can see some of their high quality murals so then you say okay well gee I'm interested in, in working with the committee on that gee I'm interested in, in raising money uh, where do we paint it well that needs to be determined uh, you know is it um, you know is it something that could be on, on a town building or a school building perhaps larger towns what they're doing is uh, they're actually uh, kind of renovating uh, areas where there, if there's an old brick building uh, on, you know the murals going on the side of it and uh, it actually uh, increases uh, the the quality of the building from a aesthetic perspective because you're able to uh, you know put something uh, on that makes this unique looking and uh, certainly uh, uh, can upgrade the appearance mm -hmm. so uh, I'm providing the information for the opportunity to see if the town wants to do this 
And anyone that is interested in learning more about it, uh, please contact me at info at EG Town Hall or just call the office at 860 413 All right. Um, I think you have some information about the VA Employment Services. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, the, um, we've been, um, our economic development uh, officers and the commission have done, you know, we've talked about some of what we're trying to do with uh, small businesses. Um, earlier in the year, we uh, provided uh, information and services to small businesses on the federal programs. And then uh, the long-term recovery committee uh, is working, uh, you know, with, with, there's another survey coming out and you know what is it that the town needs mm -hmm. so there's a lot of efforts that we're doing and at, at the same time there's an effort uh, that the connecticut department of labor is doing uh, for veterans okay. so it, what it is is there's uh, so what i use those examples because you know there's so many different needs that what we're trying to do is address the needs with programs or services uh, so anyways, the Connecticut Department of Labor uh, Veteran Services provides employment services uh, and assistance to eligible veterans and their spouses. Uh, services may include but are not limited to resume preparation, job leads, job search strategies, interviewing tips, uh, peer support, locating resources, case management, and career planning. Um, so if you're a veteran and you're under or unemployed, uh, you can schedule an appointment um, and uh, it's, um, uh, you can call the office or email the office and I'll give you the website or you can um, call the uh, Connecticut Department of Veteran, uh, Connecticut Department of Labor Veteran Services. Uh, and uh, that number is 203-455-2711, or I have an email address. Uh, so if, you, uh, if you're unemployed or, or underemployed, uh, there is a, a program out there that will help you uh, with your job seeking and, again, with people uh, with uh, COVID effect, uh, people lost their jobs or, or are working a lot less than what they did. So if you're a vet veteran, um, there's a, an, an additional program that's available, and we'd be glad to assist you with that. When in doubt, call the, uh, the my office at 860-413-3301 or info at egtownhall.com, and I'll get you where you need to go. Okay. Sounds good. And since you're speaking about the veterans, do you want to tell me also just about the National Guard deployment as long as... We're kind of on the topic. Yes, uh, 600 uh, members of the Connecticut National Guard are being deployed. Uh, they uh, yesterday they started their journey uh, to uh, started their journey to the uh, Horn of uh, Africa. Uh, so the. Uh, uh, so there, there's a deployment. Um, it's the biggest deployment for Connecticut since 2009. 600 soldiers are headed to Texas, and then they're going to Africa, where they'll be assisting with an ongoing mission. Uh, in the past year, they've been battling the pandemic, uh, so now uh, they are replacing a different unit that's in Africa. Uh, so they're going to be part of the security force mission as a part of the ongoing operation Enduring Freedom's Horn of Af Africa. So Enduring Freedom was the uh, it was the program or, or was the the uh, military plan uh, that was uh, uh, put in place after 9/11. Uh, and when they were looking for terrorists and, and trying to keep us safe, uh, I thought it was very, very worthwhile to mention because of the fact that you know over 600 folks from East Grant from East Grant, 600 folks from Connecticut are um, leaving their families, and they're you know whether it's a, uh, a, a male or a female soldier, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're leaving their families. And um, I saw some information, and there's a captain, Joseph Stout, uh, and it's his second deployment. And he's uh, was in Afghanistan before, and you know, one of our resident troopers, by the way, just so that you can see that these things hit home and everybody. Uh, one of our resident troopers, uh, 
who was deployed for a year and three months uh, to Afghanistan. I uh, saw so Captain Stout was quoted in an article I saw that he said, it's always been a pleasure to serve my country. It's one of my dreams going growing up as a kid that I would be able to represent the nation. Um, all the soldiers volunteered for this mission, uh, and they will be joining guardsmen from five other states ready to serve. The deployment is going to last 10 to 12 months. And as I mentioned, Enduring Freedom, this one is in the Horn of Africa, uh, was launched in 2001 as a counterterrorism response to the September 11th terrorist attacks. So, um, you know, whenever you're having a bad day or, you know, if somebody cut you off in traffic or if uh, the local coffee shop got your, they got your order wrong and they put two sugars in instead of one, you know what? You're not having a bad day uh, compared to the families where for a year their their husband or wife or brother or sister is going to be uh, serving uh, to help protect us. And um, it's, you know, it's just important to keep perspective. And the perspective is that these folks make sure that we're able to maintain the lifestyle and the freedoms that we um, treasure and I don't think we always appreciate what they do and when I have an opportunity to put the spotlight on um, I do so thank I you to that. the uh, thank you to uh, our Connecticut National Guard mm -hmm. that's well said thank you um, there's can you tell me about the so the Trinity blood transfusion program yeah, the, uh, this is uh, phenomenal. Uh, the Grammy Ambulance Association is one of, uh, you know, which provides the emergency services to East Grammy, mm -hmm. is one of 36 uh, agencies in the entire country that are able to treat parent, uh, patients suffering from life-threatening blood loss. So they store, um, they store blood. Uh, in the vehicle, uh, and uh, it's you know, a special cooler, and uh, it's got a special state-of-the-art warming blood tubing. Uh, so anyways, so they store the blood at uh, between 1 and 9 degrees Celsius. Uh, I've been out of school longer than you. What, how cold is Celsius? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and, ask, my, ask my kids. They probably just learned that in school. <laughs> and, and the, uh, well, I've, I said the grade, I've used it. But anyways, the, uh, so anyways, uh, then the blood gets uh, with a state of an art, uh, state of the art warming blood tubing, the blood gets warmed up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, I understand. Um, and, and so what that does is means uh, if there was a terrible uh, accident and somebody had lost a tremendous amount of blood, um, their, their ability to survive has been greatly enhanced because mm -hmm. the ambulance that is uh, assisting them, in this case the Granby Ambulance Association, is assisting them is going to be able to to, to uh, help make them safe quicker. Uh, so it's, um, you know, I feel proud for the Granby Ambulance Association because uh, they're one of 36 in the entire country that are qualified and able to do this. And it's just another um, service that is offered through Trinity Health, which is St. Francis Hospital here in, in Hartford. Uh, and it's um, pre-hospital medicine it's whole blood transfusions. So it's uh, just another tool in the toolbox uh, to help keep people safe. Is that just a, it's a training that they went through, spe a special training in order to... It's special training, a special uh, stock of blood, it's special mm -hmm. equipment, uh, and it's rare. Uh, you know, you've, we've got 50 states, that means that there's not even one in, uh, of yeah. these uh, facilities in each state. Wow, that's impressive. So uh, it's a great get by Granby Ambulance Association, uh, and uh, just is another reason that makes me um, happy that uh, back in 2013 we were able to uh, um, make an arrangement with the Granby Ambulance Association, a shared service where they were able to take over our our uh, our. Uh, medical services uh, we upgraded from a basic to advanced uh, so that was a plus also uh, the uh, just to remind folks the ambulance is actually in the East Granby uh, uh, 
building uh, for 12 hours a day, and the other 12, the uh, in the slower hours of the of the uh, evening, uh, the uh, ambulance is uh, uh, in Granby. So, but they service East Granby, Heartland, I believe, and uh, of course Granby. Very nice. Well, we have our, our, our Ridge Run, I can't talk today, I guess, Ridge Run <laughs> um, happening this year, but virtually, is that right? Yeah, it's a virtual 12th annual East Granby Ridge Run and Walk. It's from March 13th to March 17th, so, you know, as we uh, as we're speaking, uh, it's the eleventh. So there's, uh, but I believe we mentioned it at the last uh, at the last talk uh, town topics. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, uh, if you uh, if you want to support the women's club, uh, if you want to have some fun and you want to do a virtual uh, uh, run walk, uh, look for the East Granby uh, Women's Club website and uh, you'll get all sorts of information. But when in doubt, we can put you in contact with them at info at egtownhall.com. You're going to have a lot of emails mentioning that. We, we like that. That's we fantastic. Like that. We like yeah, that. Very we helpful. Want, you know, and actually, thank you for bringing that up. The, um, if, you know, so, and I didn't do this heavy handedly, and I didn't do this uh, with the thought of saying this, but, you know, if you want to get uh, a question answered, you can send an email to a town site that is monitored 24 hours a day. 24, you may not get the response at 3 in the morning, but I mean, the email systems are reviewed uh, every 24 hours. Or you could, you know, write in Facebook. You know, Jim Hayden, what about this? Yeah. <laughs> or you could actually get the answer by going info at ecetownhall.com. I've got a smile on my face. I'm being a little facetious. But what it is is, is uh, social media doesn't take the place of, of, of contact and the most efficient way of contact with the town soon will be back to normal with uh, with the town buildings uh, being open. We're open for business. Uh, we take appointments, but the doors are are, are not uh, are locked. I assume that will change. So, uh, but I mean, the, if you've got a question, the best way to get it answered uh, with someone whose job is to return the email um, is to use email, not social services. Um, so the, I, I'm, you know, I say social services is because we just got distracted. Um, GCTV wanted to come back in. Uh, so, anyways, the um, uh, it's if you want efficient, quick information, you know what? I don't always monitor Facebook, but I always monitor the email. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I've used it myself, and uh, I think that's easy to you, you read something on a Facebook page or someone says, well, this is what the town is doing, or you're not sure, and uh, it's just easier to ask the source and get accurate information than, than sit and wonder. So, Well, I feel bad if somebody, if somebody has a question that they really want answered, and, you know, it's a weekend uh, that I, uh, you know, I'm out of town, or it's a, it's, it's you know, it's a time frame where I haven't, you know, for 24 hours, I haven't looked at Facebook. I mean, uh, yeah. I don't. <laughs> so, uh, so if you want to get some assistance uh, or you have a question, we encourage questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question or a silly question. We encourage questions and we'll do our best to answer them. Sometimes the most effective way is not social media, but on info at egtonhall.com. And um, I like those emails because then we can respond and help you. We may not, you know, we may say, "Hey, we got to get back to you," or we may say to you an answer that you don't like. Uh, but we're going to we're going to get back to you. We're going to provide. We're going to be responsive, and we're going to do the best we can to assist you. Okay, thank you. Well, and we haven't gone over in a while the the police log. I think we've been busy with so many other things. But um, do do you have any recaps about that? Yeah, just real quick, uh, because we're starting to get close on time. So, uh, mm -hmm. but the uh, we uh, during the month of February, we had 627 calls for service. Calls for service include tickets, accidents, patrol checks, community contacts, administrative assignments, well-being checks, and business checks, amongst other things. 
you, uh, for January and February, there's been almost 1,500 calls for service. Um, there was eight accidents in February. Uh, eight tickets were written, uh, 20 medicals, 22 citizen assist, seven motorist assist, and 11 alarm calls. Um, just to you know, let you know, I mean, already uh, we've had uh, 13 motorist assists between January and February. Uh, and 37 medical responses and 14 accidents uh, so for the two-month period. So our police are busy. They, uh, they serve uh, the public, and uh, we appreciate the, uh, the hard work that the police officers do on our behalf uh, in difficult times uh, because, uh, you know, we... Uh, you know, COVID uh, is difficult for everybody, uh, but especially if you're a fire uh, uh, a fire volunteer or a police officer or EMS. Whenever you start mentioning things, you always forget one small stop. Uh, but I'm appreciative to everyone that assists uh, with emergency services. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I appreciate you went over so many things, and it uh, looks like we're... We're ready for the spring and all, all that comes with it. So minus the snowstorm. Hopefully no snowstorm next week. Hopefully uh, you you, uh, you offset my jinx and we're in good shape uh, yeah. <laughs> from the now until uh, next December. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Well, then that this concludes our March episode of Town Topics, and we'll see everyone in April. Thank you. Everybody have a good month.